Welcome back. Our second guest is a veteran actor and an advocate of tourism reformation in Nigeria. He famously played the role of headmaster in the successful television drama series of the 80s titled The Village Headmaster. He is Chief Femi Robinson. Chief Robinson has written a number of books and he joined us to discuss his writings and some of his current interests. It's a pleasure to have you on the show, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. You are a legend. <laughs> Am I? <laughs> you are. You are. Okay. I remember years ago, Village Master, mm. very famous. It was a compulsory show to watch mm. in Nigeria back then. Yeah. Um, you played the role of the headmaster. Yeah, Araba. How, what was that experience like for you, and why did you eventually stop? No, the experience was quite interesting because um, we came out really uh, to sell an idea um, which was uh, brought up by um, Chief, the late Chief Olushola, um, that uh, we should find a way of letting Nigerians understand their society and find a way of making sure that um, uh, we relate with government in everything that was happening. And um, we tried to, and that was why we had a lot of people coming every day uh, to come along and watch what we were doing, and we were writing scripts. And they were very interesting scripts. They were scripts that had to do with what was happening in town. And mm. therefore, it encouraged people uh, to watch. But when it comes to the question of uh, my stopping village headmaster, I was actually written out of village headmaster. Written out. I was written out of village headmaster. And the reason um, was financial. Um, I and every other person who were receiving money for writing the scripts and also acting. And the uh, contract form that was given to us indicated that if they were going to repeat any of our programs, they were to pay 33 one third percent. And when I came back from Cardiff, Wales, where I went to study theatre business administration, I felt we were being cheated <laughs> by um, television house repeating our programs and not paying us as artists. And I put my foot down and I said, we must be paid. Yeah. An attempt was now made for us to be paid. But, you know, during the military, it was a military time and things like that. Yeah, they now said no money. They were not going to pay. After they had agreed hmm. that they were going to pay. And I said I was not going to come on set unless the agreements that we signed on the contract forms were agreed to. So because I will, as usual, I'm a troublesome person when it comes <laughs> to that, you know, the agreement was made so that they can now have a new headmaster. Since I had gone for almost some few months to Cardiff, Wales, and there was a break, you know. So that's how I was written off. And um, well, I accepted it because today that is the problem we're having because the people are now cashing in on the fact that an artist all um, his works and things like that. He will go to the university, he will study in the university, he will know how to write his script, he will do everything, he will write, he will do that. But then the television house will just pick up whatever he has written and they will air it, even without paying him. They will now say that they are trying to publicize him, to promote him. How do you promote somebody who every day has no money to eat and things like that? Mm. Joseph Lyo de Garuba of Blessed Memory. The guy died in penury mm. because he wanted to be an artist. I refused to. Rather, I decided to go out and go and start doing productions myself. I decided to go out and start doing productions. 
But then I now found out that even the television house and all the people that we created, who were the people who worked for it, after we finish doing whatever we do, we bring it, the television house will now demand that we pay for airtime. And then I feel it is wrong. And it's part of the thing that makes me even angry with the system, with the media. And I believe that at my age, if I don't fight it, nobody's going to fight it. You know. Because even in those days, if I come on a television program, even to speak to you, you want to tap my brain. If I did not go to the university, if I did not study, if I did not do all these things, I wouldn't be able to talk to you. Or else you go and find somebody who hasn't even got that qualification and bring him to come and talk to about um, uh, something. And he'd be giving you wrong information because he was not schooled in it. And we see this. Mm. I want to say that channels is not one of them. But we have a lot of television stations. They just pick somebody from the street and ask him to come and talk about politics. Come and talk about this. Somebody who does not even know his left from right. And he talks. Then you have young ones listening to him. And when you now have them writing you on Facebook, you find them just saying that kind of... The only thing that the young ones know today is, oh, it is corruption. This has happened. This has, that's all. That's all they know. Mm. The only thing they know is, let us have money. You talk to anybody about anything, all he wants is money. They even feel that the federal government means money. Mm. That you should just, they should just print money and give out because they don't know. They were not educated. Mm. And even the media itself has not educated them well. So, you see, it, 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 makes, it makes me feel very bad.